So we want to talk a bit about flea and tick prevention, but we'll start with fleas because they're probably more common and people know more about them, perhaps more aware of the problems that they, that they, that they can cause. Um, and we've never had a bigger problem with fleas than we currently have. Um, they've been around for millions of years, they've survived ice ages, but now they've got central heating, they've got carpets, they've got warm houses, and they've got pets living in those houses, so life has never been easier for them. And for us as vets, they complicate all sorts of other problems. So you're probably aware that skin problems are quite common in animals, but it's really difficult for us to work out what's going on if there might be a flea component as well. And flea allergic dermatitis, you know, skin disease primarily caused by fleas, is really, really nasty. Um, and it's not difficult to prevent, but you need good advice and you need to be very systematic in the way that you manage your flea control. So you can buy flea product from all sorts of places, but if you don't get the advice that goes with it, or you don't get the appropriate product, then you, you will get frustrated. You'll think you're treating them and you're getting nowhere. So you need good advice and good products. And if you follow that advice, you can control fleas no bother. Um, and if you get them into the property, they can take months to, to get rid of them. And a flea, for instance, can sit in your carpet for six or eight months just waiting for the dog to come by or the cat to come by uh, and to reinfest the property. So it's a pretty difficult job to eradicate them. It's much better to prevent them. Um, ticks, probably not a problem we see quite as often, but actually may turn out to be more sinister because the fleas cause problems directly. They cause skin irritation and allergies. But ticks actually bring brand new problems with them. So they bring tick-borne diseases. We don't see so much of it in the UK at the moment, but there's no doubt there are tick-borne diseases around. You'll have heard of Lyme disease, very serious when it happens. Difficult to know when it is happening. It's a disease that creeps up on you and you might not realize what, that you've got it until it's doing a lot of damage. So far better that we kill the ticks early and we don't allow that disease to be transmitted. If you use a good tick treatment, it will knock the ticks off the animal before the tick has had time to transmit the disease. So you need, again, it's down to the quality of the product, the advice that goes with it. This also might become a bigger problem as more travel starts taking place, we're coming over from Europe and, and also with climate change. We're beginning to see ticks in the south of England that we didn't used to see in the UK at all. And on the continent, they transmit some much more serious diseases. So tick control could become more and more critical. Fleas, when I first started, fleas were treated with aerosol sprays and that was a nightmare and it was pretty ineffective. There was a revolution in flea treatment, probably in the early 90s, when the new really good spot-on treatments came, and they've been the mainstay of flea treatment for years. Now we've got quite a lot of different products. We've got good flea collars. Flea collars, to be honest, used to have a bit of a bad reputation, weren't very effective. We've got some really good flea collars now that last a long time, so they can be useful for some dogs where you, where you don't want to put a spot-on on or they won't take a tablet, because we've got tablets now that are very effective as well. Um, but the main thing, whatever, they, whatever you use, is you've got to check the interval at which they have to be reused. Because if you allow a window of opportunity, those fleas will be in like Flynn and you'll have your house full before you know it. So you've got to, you've got to get a good product and read the instructions and get good advice from your veterinary surgeon um, where you get it from. Um, for tick control, again, we use tablets principally in our practice and they're very effective. But again, there's a flea collar and a tick collar that works well. So the main thing is probably go to your veterinary professional and get some good advice because you don't want to waste money on ineffective treatments while the problem gets worse and then you've got to start all over again spending more money trying to recover a situation that shouldn't have happened in the first place. Most times you'll tell a dog's got fleas because it scratches and if it's allergic to fleas it will really really scratch and actually bite. They'll bite the base of the tail. If you see a dog with a triangle of hair missing at the base of its tail it's nearly certainly got fleas. It's, a very, it's almost diagnostic because they chew at the base of the tail really severely. So flea allergic dermatitis, is, you wouldn't miss that at all. The problem is that some animals are relatively tolerant of fleas. So they could have a tremendous flea burden before you realise it. You might, the first thing you might know is you're getting bitten because the dog's tolerating them and they will jump on us. They won't live on us, but they'll bite us and you can get quite a reaction. Ticks can be tricky, tricky to spot because unlike fleas, they don't move. So if you look in a dog's coat, you'll see fleas moving around sometimes and, you can, and you'll say, well, I don't know what it is, but it shouldn't be there and it's moving around. A tick's different. A tick will, will latch on and stay exactly where it is. And also, ticks, uh, you can have ticks of different ages. So they feed once a year and the, the, the juvenile ticks are tiny, absolutely tiny, so you could easily miss them. The, the future generations of ticks, when they get on, could be quite large, particularly the ticks we have in the UK, Ixodes ricinus, the sheep tick, you know, it can be... People come in and they think they're a wart or they've got a growth on the skin, they can be quite big. And they're sort of grey blue. Uh, but the tiny ones are really hard to see. So again, rather than 
wait to see if you've got a problem and then run around trying to treat it. If you're in a, an environment where ticks are likely, so there's, you know, you're, you're going out in the countryside, you're going in the undergrowth, there's sheep, there are deer, there are grouse, you know, the, the, the other vectors for ticks. If they're around, just get good tick prevention and then you don't have to worry about it.